Tonight, a special hour on the breaking news in the Natalie Holloway case. Nearly three years after 18-year-old Natalie Holloway disappeared in Aruba, suddenly a break in the case. Ron Vandersloot caught on tape in a hidden camera operation, saying Natalie died accidentally and that Yaron made his friend dump her body into the water, even though he wasn't sure she was dead, and that Yaron didn't lose a minute to sleep. Is Yaron telling the truth? Yaron has since said he was lying on that tape. What will happen next? Who got Yaron to talk? You will now hear from the mastermind behind the hidden camera operation, Dutch crime reporter Peter DeVries. You're world famous. Everybody knows you. But uh, just sort of give you a little introduction to our viewers. Tell, tell us a little bit about your show um, in Holland and, and your background, sir. Well, I'm a crime reporter for more than uh, 30 years now, Greta. I wrote several true, uh, uh, true crime uh, books. And my show runs now for 13 years. And uh, we solved uh, quite a lot of murders and disappearances. So when did you first get started on sort of the Yaron Vandersloot case? Well, that must have been uh, 18 months ago. Uh, we went to Aruba and uh, we did an investigation there on the case. And uh, well, th th there it started. How many times have you actually have met Yaron Vandersloot? I met him a couple of times, but he didn't want to talk to me. And uh, I can understand why, because I was asking him uh, tough questions. All right, so now let's talk about the taping. How did that come about? How did you do that? Who worked with you? Well, about six months ago, a guy named Patrick came up to me and he said, I'm a close friend of Joran. I met him in a casino and uh, we became friends. And uh, I don't trust his story about what happened that night on the beach. Is there anything I can do for you? He asked me. Well, I said, of course you can, and then we worked out the plan with an with a undercover camera operation. What, uh, how, did, how did you know Patrick? Well, Patrick came up to me because in Holland it is uh, 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 known that I'm intrigued and interested in, in the disappearance of Natalie. What does Patrick do for a living? Who is he? Patrick is a businessman. Uh, he has his own business. and. Uh, he, he has a, a, a criminal record for uh, 12 or 13 years ago. He was convicted for drugs possession, but uh, after that he, is, uh, he became a respected uh, businessman. What is his business, do you know? Yeah, it's a technical thing. I don't know exactly <laughs> what it is, but it's, it's okay. <laughs> so, and, and he met uh, Yaron in a casino? Yeah, he met Yoran in a casino, and they, they, they both like to play poker. They both speak papiamento, and, and that's how they contacted each other. So how did, uh, if you know, how did Patrick befriend him and get him to start talking to him? Well, that's a long process. In the beginning, Patrick uh, pretends that he wasn't interested in the whole Natalie story. Ian, and when Joran wants to talk about it, he said, well, I'm not interested, keep it to yourself, it's your business. And after a few months, when we were involved, uh, he started to ask questions about the case uh, after uh, Joran's second arrest. So what was the plan, when was the first taping? I, I think there was a little problem with the first taping. You, you, you planned and then Joran got arrested? Yeah, that's right. At the day we were planning uh, to do it, uh, he was arrested. What, uh, in terms of the high tech, I mean, I've seen these tapes and actually the quality is quite good. Um, who, who, did, who set up the cameras inside? How was that done? Now, my program did it. Uh, we often work with uh, undercover cameras. We are very experienced in that. And uh, we were thinking, where would Joran talk about his knowledge in the Natalie case? Not in his home. That would be a, a legal, a law problem for us. Not in a restaurant or a cafe but uh, he will feel safe in a car and uh, that's why we provided our man Patrick with a, with a Range Rover, a car and uh, well we equipped it with the latest sound and cameras. How much tape do you have? How many, how many minutes or hours do you think total? Uh, we have in total I think 20 hours but uh, quite a lot of the 20 hours is spent with, with men talk about football, girls, and things like that. And a couple of hours, uh, they were talking about Natalie's case. In terms of the 20 hours, that's over how many different days? I mean, is that, is that one very long trip, or is it broken up into a number of trips? Yeah, that's an important question, uh, Creda. It's not just uh, one conversation. It's not a slip of the tongue. 
uh, we have been recorded, uh, recording uh, five days, uh, so several moments, several days, and sometimes a week between it. Was he smoking marijuana? Because at least it seemed that, I, maybe I'm wrong, but it looked like he was smoking marijuana or smoking something. Yeah, Joran was uh, smoking uh, a pot sometimes. Uh, that's his daily routine. He wasn't pushed uh, to it by, by our guy Patrick. Uh, w we didn't aim for that. It's his daily routine. He, he has been writing about that in his book too. And, and the marijuana law is a little different uh, in uh, Holland, or at least in Amsterdam? Oh yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's not illegal in Holland. It's not a crime. You can, you can smoke pot if you like, no problem. Um, in terms of the actual taping, and we've heard different snippets of it, after you had the tape in the can, did you ever contact Iran and say, well, we have this tape? No, we didn't, because uh, we had uh, a couple of hours on tape, so um, there was nothing to ask, because he told the whole story. It was a full confession on tape. Do you know how he found out about the fact that you had a camera? Yeah, he, he learned that from television. <laughs> And has he ever tried to contact you or say, because now he's saying, of course, publicly that uh, that was a big lie, that he was just lying? 